Hi, okay, so this is the Operations and Procedures Manual. So it's a modern version of the old-fashioned booklet, booklet or book that describes a manual. So I decided to do a webinar because it is just easier and you can hear my voice and you can hear what are my main concerns and what are the most important things for you to remember. And you can listen to this recording over and over again and you can always revisit it later on. And um, if there's any updates, I will just send you the, a new recording. So um, I just want to um, talk again about the importance of this Operations and Procedures Manual. It is very important that all of us working with Kaori Kids and working with this program are on the same page and have the same mindset. We want to um, take the message out to other people and say that this program is really working and if you don't follow these procedures correctly, your um, the children in your care and the children in your groups might not get the positive results that we expect them to get and that might not be because of the program but it might be because of your presentation of the program. So and that will of course impact your business so you really need to see that you follow these operations and procedures accurately and, um, and also if you have any problems or any issues please talk about that and nothing is set in concrete and we can give you advice and we can talk about your issues and if you have to do things in a different way and you have very good reasons to do it in different ways, of course we can accommodate. But we need to know about it and we need to talk about it. So um, I'm just going to start from the beginning so that you um, once again know what to um, information to give to parents as well. So first of all, why did we develop Kaori Kids? Um, we did not develop Kaori Kids to get rich, we did not develop it to um, be famous, we did not develop Kaori Kids to get a, a good name out there. I used my experience to develop Kaori Kids um, and I asked Lindy to help me um, to help as many children as possible. And that is the main reason why we do that. We want to prevent problems in children. If a child of three and a, four, three and a half to four years old start on this program, they might um, skip a lot of issues that they might have had if they did not follow the program. On the other hand, some children might um, have big issues um, and these issues might be identified at an earlier stage in their life and it might um, mean that the child can have early intervention which is not possible if you don't know about the programs or, or yeah, if, about the problems. But if you know about the pro problems as identified when the child um, use this program, then um, early intervention is possible. Um, so if a child has a lot of problems and they have to attend to therapy, this program can be used complementary to therapy. It doesn't have to replace therapy, it can complement therapy and it can help the child to um, progress faster in therapy sessions as well. So we have seen that parents need very clear instructions, they often do homework in incorrect ways, they often don't do the repetitions that we require, they often don't do the movements exactly correct. And the other thing is that parents are often short on time, so um, we, a parent doesn't want a program where they have to read two pages and then do the exercise with a the child, they, it's much easier to have a video recording on the spot you can put the video on, this is what you should do, let's do it, let's get it, get it done with. Um, it's much easier for parents. Um, and then it is very beneficial for a child to do activities regularly at home and we have chosen these activities. So if the child starts at stage one and or level one, then all the activities should be fairly easy for them. So they never run into the problem of, oh, this is too difficult for me. And because we follow the developmental stages, um, the child develops with the program and the activities should be fairly easy for them until the end. So also we need effective activities and exercises that will encourage development. And we have looked at all of these aspects and we have developed the Kaori Kids program um, to make sure that it addresses all of this. 
So um, how did we do the program? We followed the program over many, many years in therapy sessions. And I have followed this, this sequence of activities. Of course, it was adapted to every child because I see mostly children individually. Um, but it has been de developed over many years and I have used it and I've seen the success of it. So I have a lot of confidence in this program. I've seen a lot of success um, in children on the program and I have seen success in my therapy session. So that's why I had the confidence to actually put all of this experience in a program which people can use at home. Um, so it has been developed with the ex expertise of an occupational therapist. Me and Lindy are occupational therapists, um, but Lindy is also an exercise physiologist, so she could give a little bit of a different angle to the exercises. We have used many of these exercises in homework programs over the years. Um, we focus on the foundation of development because that is very important for many aspects in the child's life. A strong foundation affects the, all areas of the brain positively and it also affects emotions, thinking and learning and also concentration. So that strong foundation is crucial for any other development. We also considered how the brain develops. So we know that the brain um, grows when it is stimulated and we know that new experiences encourages new brain growth but we also know that if you use um, the new growth in the brain um, over a period of time of, um, then it becomes part of your permanent structure in the brain. But if you don't use it, then we know, we call it pruning. The brain literally prunes things, dendrites that they don't use, um, and then you lose it. So when, you, um, when the brain grows, it literally gets bigger and heavier because of all the experiences. But if you don't um, use it, then the brain prune, prunes it again. So um, for instance, many years ago, I, um, I did some training with a bow and arrow. And that was, I, I really enjoyed it. I did two sessions and I enjoyed it. I wasn't too bad, but I never picked it up again. So when I go back now, after many years, I would start from scratch. I can't remember how to do it and I don't have the skill. So those two sessions I could just as well not have it because my brain pruned those skills that I have picked up in the two sessions again. However, I learned to ride a bike when I was very young and because I did that repetitively and many, many, many times, there was a lap of about 30 years that I did not ride a bike, but then when I got onto a bike, I could ride it because that became part of my permanent brain structure. And that happens when you do repetitions. And research shows that um, the, the way that our program are set up is the way that the research indicates that permanent brain changes can take place. So we also know now that brain, the brain grows throughout our lives, which is fantastic um, because we now know that even people in old age, there can be new brain growth. So suddenly now we realize that to have a stroke is not that, it is still very bad, but it can be corrected. Um, over time. It takes a long time, it takes a lot of repetitions, it takes a lot of practice, but it's not as previously thought that in old age you cannot build new pathways. We know you can. And this the brain development and brain growth is um, described in my book, um, Sensible Stimulation. And you can get hold of the book on Amazon if you're interested to read more. Um, it's just more for parents, for children from zero to three years old. Um, and it, there's a whole chapter on brain development and it's quite interesting to read that. So if you want to read it, you can get hold of the book. Okay, so to get the repetitions, we have said that it will be a good idea to repeat the exercises five times per week. And that's a new experience, a new brain growth takes place. You repeat it five times and then it means it's used and not lost. Um, 
it becomes part of the brain structure. To rest for two days means that it can consolidate and it cements it in as part of the permanent brain structure. The ideal repetitions are usually about 20 to 35 repetitions per day, um, but you can look at the program, there are more, you know, it's indicated each exercise has repetitions um, in the notes for the exercise on the video, not in a, in a separate, on a separate page. Okay, then, because you are going to run groups, um, the group is very seldom that you can do that five times per week, but we have seen that if you do it two to three times per week, the kids still progress quite well. You might need to continue with one set of exercises then for a three-week period or for a one-month period instead of for a fortnight, but the skit will still improve and you will still see those positive changes. So let's see, when you start with your groups, it's very important to meet the parents. You cannot really start with any group without meeting the parents. So what do you do with that introduction and the meeting, the first meeting with the parents? So you have to explain the programs and you have to explain how we use the, um, how we use the pro how we have developed the program and you can use the slideshow um, on the development of Kaori Kids and I'll give you a copy of that which you cannot, you can show it to parents but you cannot send it to parents because it's part of our intellectual property. Um, so you can use that to support the information that you give to parents depending on the time that you have and the need of the parents. Then you need to fill in the form that we provide for the personal details of the parents and the children. You need to um, send us a copy of that form as well. You need to explain the payment options. Of course, it's different um, in different areas. It's different in different countries. So we will decide on those payment options um, in the final um, interview that we have when we discuss the marketing and everything, so um, those payment options will be discussed then. Um, but you need to inform the parents of the options that they have and of, this, of the different options that you have available for them. Um, and then you have to explain the importance of regular participation. If you look at the previous slide, it's very important that a child at least do these exercises twice or three times per week. So that means that if a child um, attends a group, that they have to attend all sessions. If not, you won't see the progress that you want to see. And then people might lose confidence and they might not, and it might impact on your credibility of the groups that you run, which will have impact again on your business. So it's very important that you discuss this with the parents and just tell them that the child cannot do any less than two to three times per week. That is crucial for development and it's crucial for brain growth and it's crucial for um, the child to progress. Then, um, as I said, ask the parents to watch the webinar on the development of Kaori Kids. Um, then you discuss the main child's main issues and the parents' goals. This is very important because um, you might meet the child and you might decide on, um, oh, you can see that this child needs to practice core muscle strength and posture. That is really important for this child. But the parents' goal might be for this child to sit still and to concentrate and to read properly. So then you have to make notes of that um, and you have to relate what you do in the sessions with the main goals that the parents have. If you don't do that, the parents will feel, okay, I've been here for a few months, my child has participated, um, I have seen Yes, um, this provider talks about progress in balance and she talks about progress in posture, but I want my child to sit still and I want my child to read better. So this doesn't have, the things that she talks about doesn't have anything to do with my goals that I had for my child, so I'm going to stop this, these sessions. And you, so you have to relate, um, so you have to explain to the parent, okay, your goal is that the child should be able to sit still for longer periods of time. 
if the child needs to do that, they have to have good core muscles and they have to have a balance and they have to have a good posture. So we're going to work on that first of all. Then we can work on brain bridging, which will indirectly have a positive impact on the reading. So you always have to relate that and you always have to keep those initial goals that the parents have in mind and explain to the parents why you are, do things, are doing things in the sessions and how it relates to their main goals. Otherwise, you might lose clients. Then you need to meet the child. If a parent describes a child, parents cannot be objective. I'm a parent and I'm a grandparent and I know it's very, very difficult to be objective. We're usually quite subjective. So um, you need to meet the child and have an idea of what the child is like um, before you decide in which group, on which time and if the child will benefit from these exercises. Um, so, how do you decide which group and what level to start on with a child? First of all, you can ask the parents to do the quiz if you are uncertain. You can send this link to the parents. Um, it's on the website, but that's just easier to send the link. Um, email the link to them and say, please do the quiz and inform us about the outcome of it. Um, then you also have to listen to the child's main issues, as I have discussed in the previous slide, but also then you have to decide if the child has sensory processing problems. So that's the modulation and the sensory processing um, web clinics that you have listened to and you did assignments on that. Um, so then if the child ha um, has problems with sensory processing, then you start at level one, fortnight one. If the child has problems with balance, body awareness, core muscle strength, posture, then you also start at level one, fortnight one. If you decide that this child has a good posture, good core muscle strength, um, but the child has problems with left and right recognition, crossing the midline, rhythm, then that's, that means the child has problems with brain bridging, and then you start on level three. If you are in doubt at all, rather start at level one, fortnight one. Then the exercises, you know it will be easy for the children, you know they will enjoy it, and you know the child will show progress. Rather than um, start at a level too high for the child and you have to sit on one fortnight for one month or two months or three months, and it seems as if the child doesn't progress, but the, it's just because that the previous steps weren't put into place. So rather start at level one, fortnight one, um, than start later and you don't see the progress that you need to see. Also provide options to the parents about um, group sessions or individual at home and it also depends on the child. If the child is quite disruptive, if the child has very poor concentration or if the child is very shy and very reluctant to participate, it might be a good idea to start individual sessions at the child's home, um, but it's for you to consider and you have to consider many different options to make a final decision. Um, also, you need to, as I said in previously, the payment options and the pricing information and then the parents have to sign the documents. Um, so after the first meeting with the parents, you need to make notes. Don't think that you will remember everything you you observed and the parents told you, after three more meetings with three other parents, you will be confused who said what and why and when and it, it's just better to make notes. Um, we do that all the time directly after sessions and if we don't do that, by the end of the day, we can't remember what we did with the first child anymore. It's and it's just, I thought it's because I'm getting older, but the young therapists have the same problem. We need to do that note as soon as possible. And so first of all, you have to make a note on the parent's main goal so that you can always relate back to that. Um, then your observations of the parents and of the child during this first meeting. 
the preferred time for the parents? Do they want appointments at the school, before school, after school, in the evening? What will be the preferred time? Where will be the preferred venue? Does it, do they want it at the school? Do they want it at your house? Do they want it at their house? What will be the best place to go? Um, the expected level of the Kaori kids to start with um, and the main issues of the child that you have observed, not only the main goals that the parents indicated. Then also you send information to the parents after this first meeting. So a good idea is to give the parents one to three strategies to address the main problems that the parents have indicated. If the main problem for the parent is that this child really finds it difficult to sit still or to concentrate, then revisit the um, web clinics on those issues. Um, sitting still, it will be zigzaggy. Um, you know, revisit that, find some strategies and give the parents, don't give them 10 strategies, don't pretend or not pretend, but don't show, you don't need to show them how clever you are. Give them strategies that they can implement immediately with ease. So you observe the parents, you observe the child, you listen to the main issue and you decide on what will be the best strategy that they can implement with ease in their family and that might have immediately positive effects. That will give the parents a lot of confidence in you and in your skills. Then also you send them um, the time and the venue of the group for the child and if there are different options for the child, you give them the options to make a final decision on. Um, you give, send them a copy of the disclaimer document which we provide and it needs to be signed before the first session. Um, we have looked into um, insurance, um, public liability insurance for all of you, but it is just um, a headache um, to do that over different countries and to do that in so many different places in the world. So rather let them sign a, a disclaimer document and you know you will be covered if the child perhaps fall over a step at this first session and hurt its, um, her, her or himself and you will be covered that you, they won't sue you. Um, and then also give the parents or send them a copy of the contract that, that needs to be signed before the first session and we'll give you um, the contract as well. And then also um, a date and the, the, the amount to be paid before the first session. So it's very important that parents pay before the first session. We are all in this business because we want to help. And sometimes you feel so sorry for a child because you know you want to help that child but the parents are reluctant to pay. Um, in my experience, if parents don't pay, they are usually not very motivated. And um, that means that the child might not always um, attend sessions regularly and that might mean that the child won't progress and in the end it becomes very, very messy. Um, in my experience, it's just easier to do an upfront payment and get it done with and if they don't pay, then don't even start with the sessions. I know we all want to help and we all want to accommodate people but sometimes it's just um, it, it just becomes so messy in the end that you have to get the money and in the end it's, no, it's not beneficial for the child in any case. Then also um, you need to give the parent payment options like is it by credit card, direct deposit or um, just cash. Um, whatever um, you have decided on, you need to indicate that to the parents. Um, if it is cash, make sure that you send proper receipts. Okay, so you have to decide on venues, you have to decide on a venue for groups and you have to decide on a venue for individuals um, at, at home. So groups find a clutter-free environment. Please don't use a classroom that are filled with desks with with very limited open space, with millions of things on the walls hanging from the ceiling, too many distractions, especially um, on the wall behind your screen. Those screens should be, um, behind the screen should be fairly visually calm, so fairly no distractions from the screen. 
also it should be spacious to provide opportunity to move um, if you ask a child to put their hands out their arms straight out from the shoulders and to turn around and around that is more or less the size of the space that you need for every child so if you have five children times five if you have three children times three more or less and remember you need some space as well um, all the children need to see the, the screen um, you have to keep groups fairly small especially if you don't have a lot of experience with groups and um, make it easy to handle start with two or three kids in a group and build it up as your experience and your observation skills um, increases and then you add more children to the group rather than start with five or six children in a group and you find it extremely difficult to handle them um, then keep distractions to a minimum look at the visuals in the room noises in and outside the room as well people passing a window things like that are very very um, distractible um, then also um, look at it to provide a separate space for parents um, depending on your venue um, but don't ask parents to sit in um, parents tend to make comments even if it's not during the session they can make comments at home it can be negative comments they can um, tell stories to other parents they can tell how funny it looked um, when this child did that or that child did it um, it's just better to schedule um, session for parents to sit in once a month or even once a term and then the pair, the kids can show off their new skills they do that in ballet and dancing lessons as well so I just think it's it's more beneficial um, for kids to um, do the exercises to focus on their bodies to focus on the screen to focus on what they have to do and not to have to listen to parents talking or parents saying listen you should sit still parents find it very difficult not to interfere especially with small groups so rather ask them to wait outside um, then venues at the poor individual families at home keep all of the above in um, in mind um, but also you have to visit the home before the first session often parents will say oh yes you can use my living room but they don't say that the living room is part of the open plan kitchen where mom is cooking dinner while brother is doing homework while dad is coming back from work and everything is happening while you are trying to do the program with a child so look for a space um, where you can close the door and be on your own with a child um, and ensure that it meets all of the above um, to, um, you know the, the venue for the groups it, it, it's the same as the, the venue at home um, then the first group or training um, revisit assignment four and the following video clip this is the video clip of that teacher so we call her a little bit weird um, but this teacher is she has those kids in the palm of her hand she, they hang onto her lips they do exactly what she tells them to do why because she is prepared before the children arrive you should be prepared as well you should have the room ready the computer set up and ready to go on the first exercise if you spend five minutes to get the computer going, to get the, um, the to find the first exercise, to find where you want to start with the exercise, do you want to start with the notes, or do you want to start with my video introduction, or do you want to start with the exercise itself? You need to make that decision, and your computer should be ready so that if you say to the kids, "Let's start," then they start immediately. If they have to wait too long, you will lose them. Um, you have to have a spot for each child to wait they can sit or stand but they need to go if you clap your hands if you say okay back to your spot they need this is the order this is where I belong this is where my spot is you can use a carpet square you can use um, these wobbly discs you can use a, a circle um, that you draw with chalk on a carpet or on the floor and um, whatever but there should be a spot for every child in the group and even if you see one child only that's a spot to go back to and that helps you to keep order in the group 
um, you keep fidgeting toys handy for kids who um, find it difficult to sit still or to stand still. Give them something to fidget with. Um, then um, give gentle support for shy children and for movement avoiders. Um, you can ask them to be closer to you. You can ask them to be closer to the screen so that they don't see the other children. Or sometimes they find it easier to be at the back where they know the others can't see them, depending on the child. But give that extra support to them. And then have a notepad, notepad and pen ready to jot down um, any observations um, that you make during the group. You won't remember all of it. Make notes, even if you just write part of a word or a sign or something just to remind you at the end that you need to make a better note of that. Okay, furthermore, you can do the following, the spot that I talked about for each child. Um, children should be quiet in and between exercises. Make these rules and keep them throughout the session. Children will try to break boundaries, they will push the boundaries, they definitely will. Make sure that you keep them all on track from the very first moment they step in. Otherwise you might lose them and once their behavior escalates, they feed off each other and it just becomes almost impossible to get them back on track. Um, I have experienced that, I've seen other therapists with five children in a group, all movement seekers, it's just, it, once they get out of hand, it's just almost impossible to get them back on track. So um, immediately step in with a firm voice and a firm hand on the arm when a child pushes those boundaries. Ask the child to repeat the rule, what is the rule? In between exercises you go to your spot. Remind the child to follow the rule. Ask the child to say the rule over and over again if necessary. Always use a firm but soft voice. Keep that teacher in mind on the YouTube video. You have to set an example with your own behavior. If you shout, the children might be very loud and shouting as well. If you are unorganized, the group will be unorganized as well. Teach the Kaori Kids song, which is on the next slide, before commencing. Um, do that three times on the first day, by the second time the kids will probably know it already. Um, so you can repeat it a few times in the beginning and at the end. So then children know, we come into the group, we sing the song, this is the group, then we do the exercises, we sing the song again and we leave. Um, that's just a good beginning and end um, for your session. So the song that I chose was the Old MacDonald Had a Farm. I think in the Western English speaking world everybody knows this tune. I cannot sing at all. I'm quite false but anyway I will just try um, and you can sing it in a much better way I'm sure. So it goes like we are all coordy kids hee hi hee hi ho and we are training to be strong hee hi hee hi ho with a jump stretch here and a jump stretch there here a clap there a clap Everyone is learning. We are all coordy kids. Hee hi hee hi ho. So I hope the kids enjoy this and I hope you can sing better than I can. So anyway, um, so after that um, you your session starts and you do the exercises. What you have to do during each session is very, very accurate observations and you'll have to and that's one of the other reasons why you don't need to start with a big group start with a small group because you need to um, um, learn the skills the observation skills and you have to improve those observation skills as occupational therapists we are trained to observe people from our very first year on uni and we did that for four years at uni so we are pretty good with that and it's very, um, it just, it's just a habit, we just do it. But you, if you're not an occupational therapist, you really have to think about it and you really have to think of what am I observing, why am I observing this, you know, I need to write down all my observations so that um, I can use it in future to address problems in the child. So always keep a notepad ready, um, 
revisit the observations after each session. That's quite important. Um, finish the words that you wrote halfway, finish a sentence that you couldn't complete um, so that you can read it later on again. I know some of my notes I cannot read um, at the end of the day because um, my handwriting is horrible if I'm in a hurry. So um, you have to revisit that after a session. Um, then you have to write notes on the child's file about your, the observations that you made. You need to write notes on your observations um, for your group planning folder and your group, group planning file. Um, before the next session, you share any strategies that parents might find useful. So you make your observations, you make your notes, you jot down what you want to share with the parents and then you do that directly before the next session. If you do it after a session, in my experience, parents can hang on for a very long time to discuss these problems. If you do it before a session, parents know that you have to start with a session and they will be short and sweet. But after a session, they often don't realize that you have another group running in 15 minutes and you have to make your observations on this group and write it all down so that they might keep you for a long time. Um, so rather make your notes after the session and share it with your parents before the next session. If you have time, you can even send them an email. Um, so you can ask us for any support or ideas to handle specific children or your group in general. Um, don't ever hesitate, we are here to help and that's what we want to do and that's why we are busy with Kaori Kids and that's why we have providers, so don't hesitate to ask. Um, more on observations, what do you have to observe? You have to observe a child's performance very closely. You have to look at the posture, compare it with the posture of the model on the um, video. You have to observe the child's facial expression. That will give you an indication if this child is relaxed, if this child is bored, if it takes too much effort for the child, if the child is following other children, if the child is distracted by things outside the room, if the child is concentrating. So the facial expression is extremely important. The other thing is breathing. If the child is holding the breath and not breathing deep breaths, it might mean that the child finds it very um, stressful and very difficult and that might lead to a very anxious child because their breathing is very shallow, they don't get enough oxygen and that makes them anxious. So breathing is important and check the breathing that will tell you more about how the child experienced these exercises. Then observe the, the number of repetitions. Some children can rep do 20 repetitions, but only the first four are good quality movements. So make a note of that. And if, if you see children individually or if it is possible to stop the group, rather do less repetitions um, and let them take a break and do about four again than to do 20, but the quality of the movement and the posture of the child is not good. Then also make an observation of the reaction after each session. If the child is very tired, if the child just runs out and just had enough, or if the child lingers and wants to do more and enjoy the session very much, that is important for you and it's important to read those observations to see if the child is really progressing very well. If they have every exercise under the belt and they can do it with ease, usually you see that they really enjoy it. If it is too easy, they might be bored and they might be reluctant to come back the next session. So that these are very, very important to, um, to see that all children are progressing at their level. And if necessary, you might um, decide after a month or two or three that you want to divide a group in two, in two groups because the one is progressing much, the one part of the group is progressing much faster than the other and that's okay. So, you know, you have to see what will be the best thing to get the most positive outcome. Okay, you need to set an example. If you are excited, the, ch the child and the parents will be excited too. If you have positive thoughts about the program, the child and the parents will have positive thoughts as well. 
if you enjoy the sessions, the children will value these sessions and they will enjoy it with you. Um, children love adults that enjoy to have time with them. So it's really important that you enjoy the sessions and that you enjoy spending time with the children. If you encourage with true compliments, the children will respond positively. If you lie to them and if you say they did well if they did not, then they won't believe you and you will, will not have that positive response. Um, you need to give true compliments. If you cannot compliment a child on anything, at least compliment them on the way that they try to do, on the way that they try to behave, on the friendly smile they gave, on the way that they said hello or goodbye, then you should find something to um, compliment a child on. So if you support with gentle encouragement, children will eat from your hand. Keep that teacher on the YouTube clip in mind. Those children were hanging on her lips. They did exactly what she expected of them because she gave short, clear, concise instructions. She knew exactly what she expected from the children. So she could communicate that to them and they responded positively to that. If you maintain order and follow all the rules that you have set up in sessions, children will too and they will love you to bits. If you set a rule and you don't follow that rule, the children sees it and th see it and they lose confidence in you and they don't enjoy the sessions with you because you don't do what you said you sh they should be doing. Okay, now you have to remember that children come to these sessions to do exercises and to enjoy their time, but the important thing is they are learning and they are developing. And you are using a playful way to encourage them and to present their exercises and you want to have fun with the children and that's all good. But the children are learning and developing so you need to compliment them on new achieved goals because that is the biggest reward that the child can get is that to achieve a goal because that's what they are working for. Um, and the reward should be positive feedback, any effort um, that the child makes rewarded, reward any positive um, reactions of the child. And the children might be tired after each session because they are learning and developing. And share these points with the parents, share with the parents that the kids um, are learning and developing, they're not playing. They are, so they might be tired after the session and they need a break, they need 10, 15, 20 minutes of no instructions, of just be, being, sitting in the car without listening to many different things um, or coming home after the session and just go to their room and um, just relax for a few seconds or minutes before dinner time or before the next set of instructions is given to them. Encourage parents to make regular exercises part of a healthy life and they should communicate this to the children. So they should encourage the children to play in parks, they should participate in sport, parents should play outside with the children. Um, they can repeat some of the exercises at home as a family too. And um, parents should enjoy at least one active activity per day with a child. So they should go for a walk, play outdoors with a ball, play indoors, some skittles or some active game. Um, and then also children should be involved in movement activities for at least one hour per day. So you should communicate that to the parents because if they attend your sessions, um, for instance they're in a group and they come two to three times per week and that is the only times that week that they are actually actively involved in any sport or any active activity, then their progress will be much slower. And also they won't have the opportunity to practice these new skills and to implement them in their daily life with other activities. So as I said before, I often see that the child, um, or I hear that the child has moved up with swimming. So that means that they have implemented the skills that they developed in therapy 
they have implemented in the swimming lessons and then the swimming improves. But if they don't swim, then they don't have an opportunity to practice the skills that they learn in the session. So they will improve even faster if they do activities outside the sessions as well. And the parents should set an example of being active to encourage general health. So if you present these prog this program, you need to read the notes before the kids arrive. The notes are important. You need to follow these directions accurately. Make sure that you understand what the child has to do so that you have clear expectations of the children and that you don't um, give um, confusing instructions. Check the ideal repetitions and work, and that, that will be your goal and, and that you have to work towards that goal. Understand that goal for each exercise and check the notes of the previous session before the next session. Then you have to follow the video accurately. We made the videos for a very specific reason and that is because often parents and other people do the exercises in the wrong way. So you have the video, follow the video, check the movement, check the posture, check the timing, check the sequence, check the repetitions. You have to follow the video accurately. That's why you have the video. Okay, so observe and focus. Observe the model in the video. Observe its child. If a child has trouble doing the movement, assess the reason for the trouble. Assess the reason, is he not concentrating? Is he trying but he's not able to do the movement? Doesn't he understand the instructions? Find a reason and then assist the child um, that has difficulties. And you can assist them in different ways. Simplify the movement or the activity. Um, if they have to stand on one leg, you might say, oh, okay, today you stand on one leg. See if you can do that for two seconds and then you can hold onto my hand up to 10 seconds. Um, so just make it a little bit easier for them just to encourage them and to make sure that they're still participating. You might need to move the child's body or limbs in the way that you want it to move so that the child can feel the correct movement. If they can't feel the correct movement, um, they don't know. If You get children who cannot understand demonstration and they cannot in understand verbal instructions. So the only way they can learn a movement is if you move the body or the limb in the way you want it to move. Um, so that's very important. We call it hands over. You have to practice and you have to repeat. Um, so that's why we have the repetition in Kaori Kids. So they have to practice and repeat. Um, be patient. Um, the kids are joining this program not because they are training for the Olympics, because they have problems. So expect them to have some difficulties. In our experience, they usually have, when you start on a new fortnight of exercises, you, you, they usually have problems with the first, on the first three or five sessions, and then they can do the exercises with ease. So usually the first few days of a new fortnight, and then the next following week, it's easy for them, because then the development has taken place. In a group where you see, only see the group twice per week, you might see that change in the third or the fourth week only. Always praise positive efforts. Okay, you have to keep records, make observations and notes. And I repeat myself because this is so important. The quality of movement, the number of repetitions for each child that they did with a good quality movement, the session that the child attend, the effort that the child used, including concentration, and any specific behaviours that you observe. Clowning, resistance, shyness, refusal to participate, poor quality of movements, whatever. And I will give you a form to keep these records on. And it's quite easy to use. It's on a Word document. You just add to that every week and you just send me the whole form and I just keep the latest one because it will have all the information on. And then on one page we can see exactly what is happening with the child.
Rewards, rewards can be verbal praise, it can be a sticker or a stamp, just check with the parents as some children have allergies or skin sensitivities. Um, a tick um, on a chart and they, they are charts that you can download with the program um, to indicate that the child has successfully completed a set of exercises or a fortnight or a level and you can give rewards. You can decide on the rewards there. I am a little bit against giving um, like gifts or buying something, anything more than a sticker because the fact that the child has achieved a goal is already a reward. That's after all how we are rewarded most of the time. Um, if you did a job very well in work, it's very seldom that you immediately get a reward other than praise. You, you, if you get a reward in the form of a certificate or a um, a, a, you know, a bonus or something like that, it's usually after a month or after a few months, but your immediate reward is usually the fact that you actually achieved your goal. Um, positive efforts, not only perfect um, participation, but if any positive effort should be rewarded. Um, noticeable improvement should be rewarded. and rewards, as I said, at the end of a session, fortnight or level. Um, and every child in the group should be rewarded for something every time. Be specific. Find something that that child did well on that day. So before the child leave you, you should have given each child at least one compliment. And don't give 10 compliments to one child and only one to the next. Keep them fairly equal. Do it as a standard, give one to two compliments per child per session. So you need to expect positive outcomes. Um, you will notice positive changes in the children if they participate in these sessions. Look out for these changes. Sharpen your observation skills. Keep in mind that the program follows the normal developmental phases. That means that it often looks as if a child should have developed in any case. I often hear parents say, yes, the child has matured um, and the swimming has improved and he's running in a better way, but it might have happened in any case. But then I would say, yeah, but the child is seven years old now. It didn't happen in the past seven years. So why would it suddenly happen now? It happened because we have intervened um, so, and you have to communicate that to the parents as well so that you can build on your credibility. Um, and try to connect these changes to the exercises. So if the parent, um, for instance, say that, yes, I can see that the child can sit still for longer periods of time, then you relate it back to, yes, that was one of your initial goals that you had to get the child to sit still for longer periods of time. But you know what? I saw that the child has, the core muscle strength has improved so much and that is one of the reasons why the posture has improved and why the child can sit still for longer periods of time. So you have to have that and if you have problems with that after all this training, please communicate that to me because then I have to do the training in a different way so that you can get that. Okay, then a maturity can be seen in many other aspects of development as well. So if the child, the sensory motor skills develop, often we see emotional and social maturity and improvement in concentration skills um, and that will happen at the home and in the classroom. There are a few things that you may never ever do. First of all, you may never punish a child. A parent punishes a child. We as Kaori kids, providers, never ever punish a child. You can merely ensure that you have all in place to make it easy and enjoyable for a child to participate. Ignore bad behavior. Do that firm voice, firm hand on the arm. Um, but sometimes it's to ignore something if a child would swear, for instance. It's sometimes better just to ignore it as if it didn't happen and focus on something that another child did very positively or that that same child did very positively. Um, to ignore is sometimes 
a punishment in itself for a child. So um, we just never ever punish, don't go there. Um, never ever laugh at a child's efforts. Sometimes the kids try to do things and it looks so, so funny, really and truly funny. Don't laugh, please. You never know what impact that might have on a child. Never ever tease a child. If you laugh, if you tease, other children might join in and you might have a big problem in your group. Um, never say anything negative about a child, not in the session, not in front of the parents, not to the parents. Always focus on the positive in the children. If the parents come with a negative thing, say yes, but, and say something positive about the child. That will, um, parents will be pleased about that and that will help to build the child's self-confidence and it will help parents with difficult children to see the positive aspects in their child as well. Never ever discuss a child within the child's hearing distance. Only when you want to share praises and you want to share improvement and you want to share something joyful, um, never ever discuss any problems. Rather, don't even go there. Don't discuss a child in front of the child. Always, there are a few things that you should always do. Always should, you should always notice positive efforts. You should always compliment efforts. You should always be calm and in control of the session. You should always enjoy the time you spend with the children in the session. So these are very important and this, this is the bottom line of why kids love to spend time with you and why kids love to come to sessions. It's because you are doing these things. That is why they love it. Um, the, the, the program itself will be enjoyable, but it will be so much more if you can keep going with this. And the kids w will be reluctant to leave and the parents will love to bring their children because they love to come and they are in a good mood when they leave you. Um, so that will just, it will build your credibility, it will build Kaori Kids credibility, it will build your business. Things that you can share with parents is that we encourage development, but we cannot force it. And you can relate to that little story in the previous assignment of the um, butterfly coming out of the cocoon. And every child will reach a plateau. This is necessary to consolidate skills. So if they have progressed quite fast and learned a lot of new skills, they often reach a plateau and it looks as if they're not progressing anymore. But it's just to consolidate all these skills and to practice all these skills and to use the skills in everyday tasks and in everyday play. And then the child will, continue, will make a, um, a developmental jump again after that. Um, so every child will develop on, at their own pace. It's, you won't have five children in a group and all five of them proceed on the same pace. It will not happen. Um, so we have to be patient. We have to observe accurately and we have to encourage. And we have to communicate with the parents. And we have to be positive without having too high expectations of children or of parents. So, um, but we have to be positive about the changes that will take place and you have to have confidence in that. The providers that have used the programs for their own children will know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you feel like giving up, but you need to stay positive because this program, it has been developed with 40 years of experience, it will work, it will bring positive changes along. Okay, I'm looking forward to see a video of a group that you can simulate um, and how you do that. I don't have a video of a group for you and I'm not going to share one with you because I want you to use your own personality, to use your own skills, to use your own interpretation of this operations and procedures manual to put one group together to video record it from the moment the children arrives to the 
when you have do when you have done one set of exercises to the last little song and where you say goodbye to the uh, to the children you don't have to record the parents um, it's just you can use your own child you can use a, a friend's children you don't have to use children with problems you can just use two to three children and simulate a group of Kaori kids and I would love to see that video all the best and um, you are coming to the end of your training and very soon you'll be building your business and I look forward to this fantastic opportunity to work with you. Thank you very much for listening to this.